if some part of it <clears throat> if some part of a body is removed if some part of a body is removed then the center of mass of remaining center of mass of remaining uh, uh, remaining part is given by is given by you can use r cm is equal to a1 r1 minus why minus because we are removing that part that's why I am using here minus and here A1 minus A2. As I am using area, it means I have taken a laminar body. Laminar body. <clears throat> here A1 is area of total body. Complete body area you have to take. Area of total body. And A2 is area of removed part. Area of removed part. What is R1? R1 is the center of mass. Center of mass of total body total body and r2 is equals to center of mass of removed part whatever part you have removed that part center of mass is r2 i'll explain this formula with an example Let's suppose I have taken a uh, disc and from this disc, let's suppose I have, uh, I have just removed this part of the disc. This part of the disc I have removed. We are touching on this part of it. So the complete radius is uh, R and its own radius will be this radius will be r by 2 r by 2 radius part this part i have removed the total radius is given as r and it is a disc so disc is a laminar body so i am going to use the formula this so here one note i am writing that is very important in such question the shift in center of mass or the center of mass of remaining part center of mass of remaining part shifts shifts along the line along the line joining along the line joining center of mass of total body and that of removed part. So in which direction center of mass will move? So this line will give you the indication. Like actual center of mass is here. And the removed part center of mass will be here. So center of mass will be shift along the line joining these two. This line center of mass will shift. Definitely initially center of mass was here. 
as this part right side you are removing so left side more mass will be there so center of mass is going to shift on this side that means now center of mass might be at this place and this i know so that means center of mass has shift towards left this part understood yes sir i understand okay So, if I try to find the uh, center of mass, is let's let's write is as uh, uh, or no x x axis also you can write, but let's suppose I am using as r only. So center of mass I know it is a one. A one is the area of total body disk area. I can write here pi r square. And uh, uh, the area uh, a one into r one is also there. Okay, so r one, this I am taking as the origin. Let's suppose I am taking as the origin. So this coordinate is zero zero. So that is zero. Now area of this part, removed part, removed part has a radius r by two, and it is a distance r by 2 so its coordinate is r by 2 comma 0 so i can write here r by 2 divided by a1 minus a2 that is pi r square minus pi r by 2 square this is 0 minus this will be a uh, pi r cube Divided by four into two is eight, and uh, this is uh, pi r square minus pi r square by four. So that is minus pi r cube by eight, and this is coming here three pi r square by four. If you solve it. It is minus pi r cube by eight, and you can write here four by three pi r square. If you cancel here, you get one r only, and this is two. So you get the answer minus r by six. So how much center of mass will shift? This will be towards left. That why it is negative, and the shift it will shift by a distance r by six. Understood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This one is yeah. writing.
Yes, sir. Okay. Now we have uh, discuss. We'll discuss the center of mass of few uh, unsymmetric body. Like uh, let's take in your target book that you have received. You have. You will see that uh, center of mass in this chapter. There is a chart that different type of bodies there and where is their center of mass. Okay, that all is written. So that chart also you should refer and you should uh, remember all the center of mass basically. That is very important. Okay. Oh. Knowing, knowing center of mass is very important. Where is the center of mass that you should understand. But few derivations, all derivations I cannot do, but few derivations, how to write the derivation that is also important. Okay, so uh, I'm just taking few derivations. Like let's suppose I take center of mass, center of mass of a uniform ring, center of mass of a uniform ring or a ring uh, is a complete only uniform semicircular ring because the ring center of mass will be at the center only. But if it is a semicircular ring, then how to find? Let's uh, one derivation I'll do. <laughs> semicircular. Now, if I say I have a semicircular ring and I can uh, keep it like, let's suppose this I have kept like this. And uh, this is the diameter part. That means I have kept in such a way that uh, if I take the center as the origin, then you can see that x uh, about x s axis it is not symmetrical, but about y axis it is symmetrical. About y axis it is symmetrical. Why I am saying that? You can divide in it into two parts. You can divide it into two parts along y. If you cut it along y axis, it will be divided into two equal parts. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if it is symmetrical about y axis, so center of mass must lie on the y axis only. So center of mass must lie somewhere on the y axis. So I'll try to find the y coordinate. Uh, I, I know that for y coordinate center of mass, what should I do? I first try to find a small dm and I'll take its y coordinate. Then I have to integrate it and then we have to divide by the total mass that is dm. This is the formula that we should use. Now, how to find dm? That is the first thing. Ring, uh, this ring is having uh, mass m. Total mass of the ring is uh, semicircular ring is given m, and the radius is r. So I take a small element. If I take a small element here, let's take a small element. How I can take a small element? I'll take uh, one. I, I'll just draw a radius at the angle theta. And then that angle slightly I'll increase, slightly I'll increase like this. And how much I have increased? I have increased by d theta. So between these two, you will find a small element that I have taken already because the element lies only on the circumference. So I have taken a small element here uh, of length dl, okay, dl. And I know that what is dl if the radius is r, and the angle between is d theta. So length of the arc is, you can find by radius into angle. So I can use r into d theta. So that is the length, r into d theta. Now, how to find the mass of this, uh, uh, this is small length that I have taken. So first I use the density. So density is basically total mass and mass is only on the length. Length is how much? Length is pi r. 
so if i want to find dm i'll use the basic concept that density multiplied by length density multiply by length density is m divided by pi r and length i have taken dl and that dl equals to r d theta so i can use here m by pi r multiplied by r d theta r r gets cancelled so i take m by pi into d theta this is our dm because dm is very important so dm finding i have we have i have found as m by pi theta first you do up to here and see that if you have any doubt then you can ask please copy up to here first Yes, sir. Done. Yes, sir. That is. Have you finished writing? Yes, sir. I'm done. Okay. Now I'll use this formula nil to find the. Now here one more thing. What is y? I'll take. Can you tell me what is y? What I'll take? What is the coordinate of this dm? Dm is the y coordinate that I have taken. Now, how to find y coordinate? This will be the y coordinate if this line. So, if this is r, this is theta, then I know that x coordinate will be r cos theta and y coordinate will be r sin theta. Do you agree, Neil? Yes, sir, I agree. Okay. That means now I can use uh, y center of mass is integration of dm. dm I have found m by pi d theta into y. y is r sine theta divided by integration of uh, m by pi d theta m by pi is constant so that i can take outside so it becomes m by pi integration of r sine theta r is also outside r let's also take out only this becomes sine theta d theta divided by here also m by pi i am taking out so it becomes d theta. If you see the diagram, the theta should, uh, you have started from this end, so it should go up to this end. That means from 0 to 180 degree. That is, that should be the limit of integration. So I am writing 0 to pi. You also am writing 0 to pi. m by pi I am cancelling. So it becomes r sin theta integration is minus cos theta from 0 to 
pi and d theta integration is only theta from 0 to pi. I can take minus sign outside minus r. I can write here is cos pi minus cos 0. And this is here pi minus 0. Now this is minus r. Cos pi is minus 1. Cos 0 is 1. And this is pi only. Minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1 will be plus. So you got the final answer that y coordinate of center of mass will be 2r by pi. That means the center of mass in this diagram will be uh, somewhere here. This is the center of mass and the distance of center of mass from the origin here from the center will be 2r by pi. Please complete it, Neil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, this is the this is how we derive the center of mass. Now, after this, uh, all that we have discussed, it was about position of center of mass. Now let's discuss about motion of center of motion of center of mass. So motion of center of mass, if I think I have taken it or not, just let me check. No, I have only used the position, motion I have not done. Okay, motion, let's discuss motion of center of mass. Motion of center of mass will be uh, very well, you can write two formulas or just you start from the position only you know the position formula that is rcm i have written it as if you have different particles then use m1 r1 plus m2 r2 and this should go up to mn rn divided by total mass that is m1 plus m2 that is plus m if i take no it is moving uh, center of mass is moving then how much center of mass has moved that is displacement of center of mass if you want to find delta rcm delta rcm is the displacement of center of mass then you need to use again m1 delta r1 Delta R1 is how much M1 has moved plus M2 Delta R2. Delta R2 is how much M2 has moved. And this will go up to Mn Delta Rn. That is Delta Rn is the displacement of nth particle divided by total mass that is M1 plus M2. And this will go up to Mn. If you divide this by the time, then displacement by time will be the velocity. You can also write here uh, velocity of center of mass. This will be also individual velocity. You have to take m1 v1 plus m2 v2. And this will go up to mn vn. And that divided by the total mass that is m1 plus m2 and that is here m. If you further try to find the uh, change in velocity divided by time, you can write about the acceleration also. 
acceleration also individually we have to take that is m1 a1 plus m2 a2 and that will go plus m n a n and that divided by the total mass that is m1 plus m2 plus n understood yes sir i'll take one example let's suppose i have a i have a uh, pulley and that has been fixed there are two bodies there are two bodies here let's suppose uh, one body is having mass m1 other body is having mass m2 m2 is going down m1 is going up that means you can also write that m2 is greater than m1 this pulley is light this is light pulley so if they say uh, find the acceleration of center of mass find the acceleration of center of mass acceleration of center of mass we can find by the formula as i know that acceleration of center of mass what i have to use i have to use here m1 r1 Uh, sorry a1 r1 or uh, let's suppose r we don't have to fight so we use m1 a1 directly i can use m1 a1 plus m2 a2 divided by m1 minus m2 or plus m2 also you can write because mass is uh, mass is a uh, scalar quantity now to find the acceleration i know that both acceleration value will be same i think this already you have learned in laws of motion here you will take the tension upward uh, downward force i will take as m1g here we take tension upward and here we take here m2g here m2g is going down m2g is going down so uh, m2g force will be more so you can write here m2g minus t is equals to m2 into a first equation and m1 is going up so i can write t is greater so t minus m1 g is equal to m1 into a if i add this two then t will get cancelled so i get here m2 g minus m1 g is equal to a you can take m1 plus m2 so the value of a i have got is m2 minus m1 into g divided by m1 plus m2 this part understood nil yes sir just one second i'm not done copying yeah yeah please copy
Yes, all done. Now I have only found the acceleration of the individual particles. I have not found the expression of center of mass. So this I am now going to use. So what I'll take, uh, one is going down, other is going up. So one I'll take as positive, other I'll take as negative. So this formula will become now acceleration of center of mass. Uh, let's suppose uh, M2 I'm taking as positive. So I can take here M2, A2 and M1 I am taking as negative divided by this is M1 plus M. So you find here that it is M2 minus M1 into A divided by M1 plus M2. And the value of A already I have found here. So I can use M2 minus M1 divided by M1 plus M2. And then the value of A I have to write. The value of A you can write here. That is M2 minus M1 into G divided by M1 plus M2. So you will get the final answer as M2 minus M1 square divided by M1 plus M2 square into G. That is the answer of center, uh, acceleration of center of mass. If you can write like this also, that is correct. M2 minus M1 divided by M1 plus M2 square into G. Let's complete it, Neil. Yes, sir. Just are done. Okay. So that is how we uh, take the portion of center of mass. If I take, uh, if I try to use the uh, second law, it's second law of Newton's second law is. Newton's second law says that force is equal to mass into acceleration. So if you have a large body, let's suppose I have a large body. And here if, I, if you want this relation, then uh, what you have to do for if this is the center of mass of the particle, then you should apply force here only. Okay, you should apply force at this point. Then only you will get this relation. Otherwise, if you are applying at the top or the bottom other than the line, that this particle might rotate also. Instead of moving, it might rotate also. If you want only it should move with this much, 
then your relation will be f external equal to mass into acceleration of center of mass that means i can use the acceleration of center of mass is basically equal to the external force that we are applying divided by the total mass you can also use if there are more than one force then you can use that acceleration of center of mass is summation of all external forces vector addition divided by the total mass now let's suppose if there is no external force acting on the particle external force acting is zero if there is no external force acting on the particle then you can see that acceleration of center of mass will be also zero so center of mass will be zero means center of mass will not the velocity of center of mass will remain constant if it is moving otherwise if it was at rest then it will continue to be at rest it means that if center of mass if center of mass uh, is initially at rest is initially at rest initially at rest then it continues to be at rest then it will remain at rest only it will remain at rest so even the particles might move but the center of mass will remain at rest when when this condition is there there is no external force acting on the system second let's suppose initially the particle center of mass was moving if i say if center of mass was moving if center of mass is moving initially initially with velocity v or some velocity then it will keep moving with the same velocity then it will keep moving it will keep moving with the same velocity with the same velocity it will keep moving with the same velocity that means its state is not going to change if it was at rest it will remain at rest if it is moving it will keep on moving if the external force is zero this points you understood neil yes sir please copy it just i'm on the last point okay Yes, sir. Uh, few examples also we can take. <clears throat> like, let's suppose uh, two particles are there. One particle is M one. and other particle is m2 and initially they are at some separation r this separation is given as r so let's suppose two particles two particles m1 and m2 are released released from rest only are released to move under the gravitational force of attraction 
gravitational force of attraction attraction then what will happen now as i know that a uh, gravitational force m2 will apply some force on m1 that i can write force f1 m1 will also attract the m2 with the force f2 and newton says that both forces are equal and opposite that means this is f1 is towards right this f2 is towards left that means both will be we can say here that f1 and f2 f1 force is equal to negative of f2 f1 force is equal to negative of f2 so if i take f2 this side it suggests that f1 force plus f2 force is zero zero means the net x net force on the system is zero so it means that if center of mass let's suppose m2 is greater the center of mass is slightly tilted towards m2 because m2 i have taken off larger mass and center of mass is close to the larger mass so as the net force is zero that means the center of mass will remain at rest because initially it was at rest because the particle has released from rest so center of mass will keep being at rest only so m1 is moving m1 will move m2 will also move but the center of mass will remain at its own place center of mass will not move do you understand nil yes sir so can you tell me where the particle will collide uh the two particles will collide at center of mass only because center of mass yes. is here only so both will come to center of mass so both two particles will collide at center of mass right yes okay please note down this example okay Let's take another example. Let's suppose I have a cart that can move on a smooth surface. This ground is smooth only. and let's suppose a person this cart you can take a mass m this cart has a mass m capital m and i have a person here who is having mass m1 or small m let's only write small m. and uh, the length of the cart is given the length of the cart is l and let's suppose the person starts moving towards right and it reaches at the this point that means if i say if man moves to the right end of the cart
राइट एंड ऑफ द कार्ट देन हाउ मच द कार्ट विल मूव हाउ मच कार्ट विल मूव हाउ मच कार्ट विल मूव दैट दे कैन राइट हाउ मच द कार्ट विल मूव so what happens if the man is moving towards right now man is applying force on the cart cart is applying force on the um, uh, man so they are internal force internal force means net force should be zero only net force will be always zero so in that case center of mass in this process <coughs> should remain should remain at rest sorry that means i can say that in this process center of mass should not move in this process center of mass should be at rest should be at rest that means wherever you were initially at the same point it should be there but man is moving so center of mass also has a tendency to move towards right because center of mass will follow the man so if man is going towards right the center of mass also tries to be go towards right but center of mass should be at the initial position only so if the center of mass has a tendency to go towards right then the boat uh, the cart will um, go in the backward direction so that the center of mass should remain in the initial place only if the center of mass was here the center of mass should remain here only so if the center of mass is trying to go towards right then the boat will itself come towards left so that the center of mass remains at the same place do you understand neil yes sir i understand okay so in that case if i say that uh, uh, center of mass or let's suppose the cart cart goes back with cars go go back uh, by a distance x by a distance x cart is going back by distance x let's say so as i know that in this uh, condition i can always use the uh, I, i know that the distance travel by the center of mass delta r cm is always zero and delta r cm i can use uh, m1 delta r1 minus m2 delta r2 minus term says that one is going towards right other is going if man is going towards uh, right uh, boat is going towards left that's why minus sign is there that is zero so if i use m1 delta r1 how much is m1 moving that is delta r1 how much is m2 moving that is delta r2 let's take m1 as the person if i take m1 as the person that i can see m1 has a small mass person has a small mass m now uh, can you tell me how much person has moved with respect to ground nil how much man has moved with respect to ground uh, the man has moved man has gone from this end to that end and the length is what l the length is l am i correct l. yes but but the cart also has moved x in the backward direction now can you tell okay. me how much how much man has moved is he, has he moved l minus x because l distance he is going towards the right distance is going towards the right and x distance is going to the, towards the left left man is left. going towards the uh, right i'm not wrong yes yeah so uh, can i use okay. l minus x yes yes so m l minus x and the boat is only moving towards left only on the ground so i can use m into x so if you use here m l minus m x 
is equal to capital M into X. So in that case, we can use here, MX will go that side. So I can say uh, M into L is equal to small M plus capital M into X. That means you can write how much the boat is going back. It is going back by M into L divided by small m plus capital M. Small m is the mass of the person. L is the length of the boat or length of the cart. And capital M is the mass of the cart. Please copy this, Neil. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Same example they can ask in different forms also. Uh, always remember if the <clears throat> like one example I'm more I am taking. Uh, let's suppose I take the example of a bomb. What happens when let's suppose this is a bomb that is kept at some place. This is a bomb. So you can see that. The bomb is initially at rest and uh, when the bomb explodes, now explosion of a bomb is not due to any external force. It is only due to internal force. Am I correct, Neil? Yes, sir. Because we are not uh, applying any force on the bomb. It, it explodes due to internal chemical reaction. Is due to internal forces is due to internal forces. Hence, in this process also, center of mass remains at rest only. There is no external force. There is no external force. Center of mass remains at rest. <clears throat> That's why if after explosion, if one part is going this direction, other part will go this direction. One part will go this direction, other part will go this direction. That's why in bomb, uh, when the bomb explodes, all the particles go in mutually opposite direction so that if you find the center of mass of all particles, the center of mass will you will find at this place only. The center of mass position is not changing due to explosion. Center of mass will remain at rest. That's why it is dangerous because in all direction, the bomb particle will go. So that when you finally find the where is the now center of mass, you will find that center of mass will be at the same place where the bomb was kept. Understood, Neil? Yes, sir. Understood. Uh, so from target book, you can uh, start solving exercise one, exercise practice one, practice two. Okay, two exercise you can solve. That I am giving as a homework. You have a target book now with you. Target doesn't uh, ask the module, right? Yeah, module, yeah, module, module. Module you have now, work oh. energy, power, and uh, so for that first yes, two, yes. Uh, first two practice set you do, okay? First two exercise. Okay. And okay. you can also you can also uh, have the doubts and then you can send me or you can ask in the next class, okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you.